What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the good, the bad and the stupid. It's Friday, January the 31st. It's Friday, it's Friday, it's party time, it's party time. And it's also Brexit day. It's Brexit day, it's Brexit day. Depending on which side of the fence you're on, you'll be going like that. Apart from that, you'll be going like this. But um, 11 o'clock tonight is uh, uh, when we leave the EU. So um, celebrate or commiserate. It's going to be all right. Don't worry, you're still alive. And um, I just wonder... I was thinking earlier about uh, the, it's only the travel things that's the biggest issue, isn't it? Getting across, but they ain't going to be too fucking. Uh, it's it, it, it's us stopping people coming this way, but us going there, I don't think there's too much of a fucking bother really for them, is it? You know what I mean? It's, it's quite lax going out usually, so um, I don't think it's going to be too much. And once you get to France, you can go wherever you like, so it ain't going to be too fucking much difference really. But. Um, uh, I was going to say, all the clocks are bonging around the country, in Birmingham, in Edinburgh, Manchester, but Big Ben's not going to bong, because all those fucking politicians that were trying to get everybody to put their hands in the pockets to pay 500 grand for it to bong, when that couldn't, when that wasn't uh, viable, they didn't put their own hands in the pockets, did they? They could have paid that, would have been chump change, and they could have fucking paid for it out of their own um, thing, if they really felt it was that important, So, but they didn't. And that tells it all. That says it all, if you ask me. So uh, it's all about protecting their money. But still, we roll with it. And we have got our independence. So there's, there's goods and bads, pros and cons. So uh, And remember, all those bananas, you can have any shaped banana you like from now on. Um, but there's a thing here about the things that have happened in history on January the 31st. I was quite surprised to see all the shit that uh, that has happened. It was like it's quite a, an important date in history as it goes. Guy Fawkes was executed on January the 31st. So unless he was in for, for prison for years, that was a couple of months after he got caught. So it might have been a quick a quick thing. But uh, and also he was tortured. It wasn't just executed. It was tortured. So this day. You're fucking going to be complain, or some people are going to be complaining, uh, you know, about or feeling a bit shit about the whole thing. Imagine how he felt. It was tortured all day. This day in 1606, his insides were pulled out, hung, drawn, and quartered. Everything. I can't think what else now. I spoke about it in the past podcast, but uh, he had a lot of shit fucking happen to him. They weren't. Uh, uh, they didn't like fucking. They didn't do him any favors. Let's put it that way. Bonnie Prince Charles died. Uh, slavery was abolished. Um, Stalingrad surrender. The, the Stalingrad surrender. Uh, was it chi a chimp went into space? The chimp went into space uh, on the thirty first, and Terry Wogan died. So there you go. A lot of important th situations happened on uh, this time in history on January thirty first. So I wonder if they're gonna. It's going to be. Uh, they ain't gonna give. They ain't gonna, you know what? They're not gonna give you a fucking bank holiday for it. They should do, but they ain't gonna. They're gonna get a bank holiday January the thirty first every year to mark independence, like the Americans get their Independence Day. I bet we fucking don't. We should. And I want one. I want more bank holidays. That's why I voted Labour. I want four extra bank holidays. But we didn't get it. Never mind. Anyway. Oh, what are we going? Oh, the uh, the Wuhan Wuhan clan. I was going to say then, <laughs> the Wuhan clan sounds like a fucking rap. The rap group, doesn't it? The Wu Tang clan, but the Wuhan clan are coming back from China. It's a plain load of people who are Ill. no, they're not ill. It's a plain load of of uh, English or uh, British citizens who are. Uh, being rescued, they're called, a rescue mission. 150 Brits are coming home from the snake flu hit China and the Wuhan. Um, so they're coming back. So I wonder if they're singing, we're going home, we're going home, we're going. Because they're going to get back and they're going straight into quarantine. So they'll be like, oh, come on. I want to get back to my creature come, but it's Brexit day. They'll be like, no, the fucking bloke with a big fucking suit on. Saying that, there was a picture in the paper, uh, not this paper, but... There's a picture of the paper of the English. I think they might have, but they landed or preparing. But anyway, there was a picture of a guy on a coach in a suit, the full gear on a coach, and he looked like he was trans transferring the passengers. So they might have well have come back. But the driver's got fuck all on. <laughs> the driver's just normal clothes, and he's just driving. Then you know, flat cap. You know, oi right, oi. Right. He's driving around like that. But there's a, the the guy sitting behind him in the big uh, full on. You know, what's it called, suit? 
So uh, the driver's fucked it if he's if they are on there and they have got it. So um, you know they're gonna let him go off. That's a calamity waiting to happen. Anyway, so uh, there you go. They, at least they get home and they can, uh, you know, once they've done their fourteen days, they'll be uh, be be free to go. They can. Uh, they'll have to just find things to do, won't they? They'll just have to kind of. Uh, they probably have a big, don't have a big swingers orgy in there or anything like that. I haven't got onto that, I haven't thought of that, but uh, I don't know what they look like. They, look, they might be a load of old people, it might be a load of wrong age one wrong age group, uh, age groups, should I say. But saying that, that Egyptian guy that was uh, was in the paper again today, the one who was fucking banging the 80 year old woman in Egypt, the one who she said that she's been she's made a sore as anything she was saying anyway he's been coming out saying he's in love so he's in love he's he wants that fucking uh he'd be happy to have the british passport that's for sure that's what his fucking game is has got to be he's, he's saying he's in love he's never felt anything like it love at first sight and don't get me wrong she's a good looking 80 year old but there's 45 years difference so uh and his love at first sight doesn't happen i'm sorry um unless he's fucking weird but anyway, each to their own. Goes the other way, goes both ways, doesn't it? There's a, there's a lot of fucking 85 year old men. Was that one, the woman, um, oh, she died, but she had massive breasts. Breasts, we, we we're not going to, I swear my head off and then I say breasts. She had massive tits. Um, what's her name? Um, oh, she was with a 91 year old guy anyway, and he was like mega rich billionaire. She was blonde, like a Marilyn Monroe type with massive tits. And, um, she died. He didn't leave enough. I'm sure he didn't leave enough. I think anyway. But fucking, that would have fucked her right over. That would have pissed her right off. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what she died of. But she she's not alive no more. So um, I'm not going to diss it in case it was related. Uh, mask. Oh, going back to the, the the virus thing. The guy, a British, an English guy here, is selling out of uh, freeze dried food. People fucking uh, are. Um, He's up 13-fold increase. He sold 87 grand's worth of freeze-dried food because everyone's panicking about the virus spread. So everyone's like upping on their, um, what's it called, on food that can last for 25 years and they're packing their, their garages and that. I'm not panicking just yet. You know why? Because the fucking the shop's just around the corner and I'll probably be one of the first ones there. Anyway, I'll, if I smell fucking something, smell a bit of a rat, I'll run around. But you ain't going to be that short changed. Anyway, well, they, I have got. I just accidentally stockpile because I keep forgetting what's in the cupboard. I've, I've got a separate cupboard which I keep putting things in and forgetting I've got things in there. So when I look in my other cupboard, I go, "Oh bollocks! I'm out of pasta and I'm out of this and I'm out of that." So I go and buy a load more, but I put it in this other cupboard. It's like a switch brain, you know. When I come back with the shop and I think I'll put that in that cupboard, but when I'm looking, I'm looking in the wrong cupboard. And I think I've got nothing so now. Anyway, I've got about 30 bags of pasta. Let's move on. Just need a bit of sauce. Can't fucking just eat dry pasta, can you? Saying that. Um, Willy Wonka could return. Could, Willy Wonka could return to screens as a woman in the shake-up of Roald Dahl's classic character. Sorry, no, Willy Wonka's a man. I don't care. I don't care. Um, I'm all for equality. But, you know, you're not going to get fucking... Um, uh, a man playing Nanny McPhee. So why should a woman play play fucking Willy Wonka? There's loads of blokes who want to play Willy Wonka. Just make, just write a new a new film with a new character with a similar character for a woman that's a female character. It's just stupid. I mean, you can do what you like. Don't ask to ask. Don't ask to ask my permission or my opinion. But uh, Willy Wonka is, was one of my favourite characters. Well, it was. Uh, was one of my favourite characters when I was a kid. Read it when I, one of the few books that I read when I was a child. Actually, I read quite a lot. Beg your pardon. Um, to say, uh, but Willy Wonka, the film and everything though. But Gene Wilder is one of my favourite actors, and um, you can't fucking beat that film. I mean, the Johnny Depp one. I didn't watch that. It was all right, but it weren't anything on the the Gene Wilder one. But the character is amazing. So uh, don't fuck about with it. Um, I thought I heard the other day that um, who else wanted to do it? Brad Pitt wants to do it. So if Brad Pitt wants, Brad Pitt does what Brad Pitt wants, all right? 
Anyway, uh, Monty Dunn has been uh, TV gardener. Monty Dunn fondles a nipple-shaped nubble on a tree and confirmed his status as an unlikely sex symbol. Fans went wild for the BBC Two host. Really, fans of a gardener's world, Monty Dunn. Um, is is there such thing as fans? I mean, these are the eighty year old fucking women, and they who's who's that into gardening that they're getting turned on by him fondling a fucking a nubbin on a tree? Look, you can see the the thing there. You see his hand on that thing. And they they're losing their shit over it. I tell you what, fucking some people don't get out enough, and I'm one of them. But that hasn't turned me on. That um, hasn't floated my boats anyway. I'm not into gardening at all, though. Can't fucking stand it. I like being in the garden, but I don't like mowing the lawn. No way. I think, yeah, I just, I ain't a fucking fan. I think it was one of them chores I was always told to do. I think it's ingrained in me when, I, you know, when you want to go out and play with your friends and you go, no, mow the fucking garden. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't wanna. Right, um, Madonna has boasted that she's never been with a guy with a small dick. Um, so she's up to her old tricks. But she's in a show about an ex Madame X. Um, maybe she's just playing, playing up for the for the situation. But she said she's never been with a guy with a small dick. How does she know? I mean, she's fucking. She's been around the block. That's for sure. She don't. She ain't no shrinking violet. But you can't just fucking have hit the jackpot every time, surely. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be a. There's probably one guy who's like sitting there reading that, and he's gone. I slept with Madonna, and I got a small dick. But he ain't gonna come out and say it, is he? But uh, she must be just playing up there because uh, everybody else has just got a confidence boost whoever has been with her anyway. So uh, good for them. Um, and good for her. She's she's still rocking. How old is she? She's uh, 61. And she's fucking got a toy boy lover who's 25. So um, fuck it. I'm all for it. These ladies, you know, power to, the, to anybody who wants to... Uh, who's, out to have fun and not sit at home fucking doing the crossword but get out and enjoy yourself um he says as he's sitting in on a friday friday night <laughs> um i got plans i got plans don't worry about me um what was i going to say oh she's also talking about oh that's because somebody in the audience they were doing a q a and somebody in the audience said uh, what do you call a man with a small penis and she said i wouldn't fucking know i've never been with a guy with a small dick um what else does she say? Like opening her legs as Mozart's music started to play. She added, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's like to have Mozart come out of your pussy. Don't be jealous. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Well, you don't want to associate something dead coming out of your pussy as you're opening your legs. So, uh, you know, that's painting the wrong picture. That's like, you know, the front row are like getting turned... Wondering whether they they should look away or put a fucking. Uh, no, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna get crude there. So uh, let's move on to. Uh, some, she's, she's talking about sharing STDs with the audience as well. So uh, put a peg on your nose. I was gonna say earlier on. Anyway, what I'm on about. I could be crude. It's Friday night. I can do what I want. It's my party, and I'm gonna be crude if I wanna. Right. Let's move on to. She's talking about fucking dead Mozart coming out of a pussy. For God's sake, it's not my fault. Um, I wonder if she had those. Remember those people that used to go around the theatre with the with the ice cream and all that shit on the tray. I don't think you see them anymore, do you? Or have not been to the theatre very often. <laughs> you used to have well, you used to have them at the cinema. That's where I'm missing it from. You might still get them at the, the theatre in the in the halfway. We used to have somebody go around with the tray selling ice cream and all that sort of stuff. Because that thing that she was doing was music but at a theatre show and they had intervals and stuff so I wondered if they were doing some handing out some rude shit around half time and whatnot. Speaking of rude shit rude shit as well Gwyneth Paltrow's shop Goop Company um, has come under fire from an NHS doctor who's been saying that they're trying to push dodgy or uh, dubious wellness products and one of them was if you remember they had to pay out Hundred forty-five thousand dollars when they were saying um, they claimed that eggs, love eggs that you put up your vagina, could balance hormones, cure depression and balance hormones. And that's just like out of that's just fucking nonsense. And uh, she said they have when this guy's come out and said that she said uh, we take our uh, 
we, we monitor all the products and we take it very seriously. We have a robust compliance team. I'm sorry, but fucking, what were they? Jade, jade made of jade, putting them up their vagina. It's just going to be bollocks, isn't it? It's like, you're going to be no different than putting up a fucking boiled egg. You're going to make no difference. So uh, take it from me. Not that I've ever done it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she sells a load of shit. What was the last one? I was just sending candles, the smell of women's vaginas as well. So, uh, dead vag not not dead Mozarts, but live uh, women's vaginas and Gwyneth Paltrow's in particular. So, get one of those if you fancy it. I prefer Glade Airwick myself. Or I prefer, I prefer Justix myself, thank you very much. I don't think I'll be getting... Uh, Fanny, fanny spelling vagina. How many different words are there for uh, vagina? I don't want them anyway. I don't want them. I don't want them. Right, okay, let's move on. Corden, James Corden has said that uh, carpool karaoke. James Corden has blasted claims that carpool karaoke is faked. Well, somebody saw you being pulled around on a fucking trailer, for God's sake, So with a camera. So uh, it is, it is um, and he also insisted, when it comes to carpool, with very rare exceptions for safety, I'm driving the car and I want credit for it because I was raised driving on a completely different side of the road. Well, what exceptions are there other than the fact that you're driving on a road? You're driving on a road, so and so apart from when we're filming, when we're filming, that's the exception. So uh, no, we're not buying it. The 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 the, uh, the covers come off. The the wheels have fell off that show. I don't watch it anyway. But uh, there's a lot of car, lot of car programs with people driving around in their cars, isn't they? I like the Jerry Spring, uh, Jerry Seinfeld one. It's all right, but you don't get you don't get much information. Comedians in cars getting coffee. That's for that one. You hear about the car, nice cars. Um, oh, where was, it, where was it going? I've done that one before yesterday. Burger van man. A, a, a man. Oh yeah, let me do these last two. That's two. Um, oh, a Scooby Doo. A guy dressed as Scooby Doo has taken his dog for a walk, and somebody's put a photo of him. Scooby Doo picking up his dog's poo. Scooby Dooby Doo picking up Scrappy Doo's poo. There, look. And I look at him there bending over to pick it up. So it's obviously staged that photo. Well, there was somebody's somebody's took that from afar, but he's like uh, he's obviously on his way out, or he's on his way home. Cause that's in the morning, by the looks of it. He's he's come out. He's twisted on a on the morning come back from a night out and he doesn't realise he's still got his fucking Scooby Doo outfit on. That's what's happened there. And another one, another guy, was mugged at the cash point by a guy dressed as a jockey. So uh you know, the guy's not very incognito if you're dressing up as like a fucking bright, you know, suit on with a jockey. They they they're not they're all colours and everything, aren't they? So if you you know not very hard to fucking spot him or spot him on CCTV now is it? Look for the guys dressed as a jockey. There ain't going to be many of them. Uh, but I'm going to leave it there. Oh, last one. Liam Gallagher's got um, um, talked Eric Cantona into being or asked him if he'd like to be a what's it called a, a, a cameo in his uh, new video. So um, un unlikely allegiance because he's hardcore Man City, isn't he? But and he, and Cantona was. Manchester United, but I think you can give Man Eric Cantona a pass because everybody fucking loves Eric Cantona. He wouldn't like, might have gone for any other players, but Eric Cantona is like fucking funny, and he's a character. He's like um, off the wall. He's he's that eccentric. If he didn't have any money and he was, he'd be like homeless. He'd be fucking mental. But he's like he's got the look of that scruffy kind of like uh, close to homeless look. Eric Cantona, like. Crazy genius is what I was going to try to say. But he's like rich, so he's eccentric. That's the way you look at that. But he's going to be in uh, Liam Gallagher's new video. I'm old enough to remember when he fucking kung fu kicked that fan. That was hilarious and, and uh, brilliant at the same time. I think he just thought fucking, you know what? He even know, you know what I mean? He's like, he's that clever. He knows that shit fucking would go around. He, he probably had that in his mind to do that to someone once sometime soon. I'm gonna fucking kick. I'm sick of these fuckers around the around the fans around the ground. I'm gonna fucking give one some, and then I'm gonna, you know, 
live off it for a long time and some of those poems that he come out with he just does that to trip you out and just fucking twist you because it, they've got no meaning I kind of got a rough idea about the old seagulls over the trawler thing but uh, you know it was loose but at the same time he's doing it to fuck your head up and the, everyone in the paper what was that one he did that um, recently at the awards for the football wasn't it and the news report, there's a picture of the news report and that was all looking like that because he just come out with a right load of gibberish. And he'd done it on purpose and he just stands there with a straight face. Can't beat it. More from him, please. Thank you very much. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you again next week. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Brexit Day. Or well, don't cry too much if you're not on the, uh, the, the side that um, voted, uh, voted out. Anyway, enjoy. See you later on. Bye-bye.